All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Get It Done podcast. I'm Joe Zanke, your host, co-founder, COO of On Demand Storage, who sponsors the podcast. And I'm with my guest today, Ryan Acconi of Evo Real Estate Group. Ryan, what's up, man? Yo, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for having me. It's great to have you, buddy. I've been um, following Evo and and following you know you guys' story and and everything going on at Volney too for the last probably year, year and a half on you know just different social media platforms. Seems like you guys, you know, have a ton going on. Seems like you guys are always busy. Um, I love what you guys do on the social media. So, um, you know, I'm happy to finally kind of put a, a face to it and meet you. Yeah, it's a pleasure. You'll have to uh, you'll have to come out and and join us for one of our networking events now that we're we're finally starting to get back to to normal. Now that networking is back, I definitely want to do that. You know, I've I've uh, I was telling you a little off air. I've met you know a couple of the guys who are in that just like Boston real estate development sector that you know developing condos, developing multifamilies around that area. And everyone just seems like such a great guy. Everyone seems like they know each other. So, I mean, getting out and just like having a, having a beer, picking you guys' brain on the market and stuff. You know, I'm someone who's interested in real estate, just like haven't had um, a ton of background in it, but um, you know, I'd love to, love to. Yeah. Yeah. We well, would love to have you. So just let me know. Oh man. So tell us about the Evo story. How'd you, um, how'd you get into real estate in the first place? How'd you get started now? You know, then we'll get into a little bit about what you, what you guys are focusing on now. Yeah. So I actually, I got into real estate about seven, seven and a half years ago now. Um, it actually, I first kind of dipped my toe in it. Uh, I had a, a good buddy of mine who was doing a single family flip in the suburbs. And this was, you know, really, as the market was kind of just restabilizing and getting back going. And he was looking to raise a few bucks to, to finish out his project. At the time I was in outside sales for a logistics broker. I had a few, you know, a few bucks kind of laying around and he was a good friend of mine. So I, you know, I, I put it in with him, kind of got a taste for it, got a pretty good return. Um, and that really, you know, really captured my interest. And then from there, um, you know, pretty quickly, I found myself spending more time um, poking around, looking at, you know, looking at real estate, driving around, trying to find off-market deals, knocking on doors, sending out letters, things like that, kind of just bird dogging. And, um, you know, before I knew it, I was spending more time than my my daytime job in real estate. And, and then before I knew it, I was spending a lot of my hours during my daytime job um, <laughs> doing real estate. and um, you know, from there, I actually, my buddy that I invested with, um, we were working together and both of us left our, our job at the same time and dove in full and dove in headfirst into real estate. And um, we partnered up with a, a third buddy of ours and we just, we just started buying up um, whatever we could trying to find any good deal. Um, we did, we wholesaled a couple properties. So we got some pretty good contracts on, on properties and, and, generated some capital that way. We raised some capital through friends and family and we were off to the races. Um, didn't really have a, a great plan. Like a lot of these guys that get into real estate that you hear, they, you know, they leverage their, their income and they get a couple of rental properties, they get going and then um, they go from there kind of just dove in um, without, you know, without really any, any plan or any money saved. I just knew what I was doing wasn't what I should be doing. Yep. Um, and I, and I loved it. So, you know, fast forward from there, um, spent about three and a half to four years um, working with those guys, doing multifamily flips, started doing some zoning projects predominantly in the city. And at that same time, we also owned a boutique brokerage. So one of my partners had his broker's license um, and we really used the brokerage just for our own um, purchases of some of our own sales. We actually outsourced a lot of the sales of our, our projects. And I saw an opportunity there to really take it, you know, really capture, um, you know, that, that spread, you know, on every transaction, there's potentially a 5% spread on the, on the sales side, on, on the buy side, splitting it. And, um, you know, I coming from a, a sales background was heading up the acquisitions and, and marketing. So, um, I kind of fell back on that and had the vision to, you know, kind of grow the brokerage. Um, my two partners um, at the time, they really wanted to focus predominantly on, on building sure. and developing. Um, 
and uh, over the years, um, you know, kind of shifted out of being the developer and into a space where I'm, I'm representing developers and, and investors and um, met up with Ricky. I actually knew Ricky back when uh, we were, we were, when I was working with, with, with rock, which was my development company, mm -hmm. we were bouncing stuff back and forth. And we had chit chatted um, many times about our frustrations with agents, with brokers about how they didn't know the numbers. They didn't know construction. Um, you know, and, and we felt that we were better off selling it on our own, which sure. when you're in the trenches of development, it's very difficult to do because it's, it's time intensive and it's a lot of attention. And obviously on the development side, it's, it's a lot of attention oh, yeah. uh, and a lot of fine details. So um, when I started to unload some of those projects with rock and, and open up some bandwidth, um, you know, got back with Rick and we have a third partner, Jack, who's Rick's general contractor, EJO general construction, the three of us formed Evo. Um, which was really, again, it was really just a brokerage to specialize in new construction in investment properties um, and also assist um, young developers with acquisitions as well as guidance through the zoning process and permitting process. Um, and it's, you know, it's been a little over two years now where we're up to about 20 agents um, and it's been, it's been a fun ride. So we're, we're still evolving. Um, but we've, we've come a long way and it's, it's been a lot of fun. That's great, man. The 20 agents. I mean, that's a, that's a pretty serious little company though, that, that for, to be able to do it in that quick of a time. And I, I like how you, know, you mentioned just diving in head first. I mean, we kind of dove in when I started my company head first, just without, you know, we had a little bit of a plan, but it always changes, you know what I mean? It like changes, especially when you don't have like a true foolproof plan and you have no experience, you know, it feels like it almost changes like week to week, like what you want to focus on. But at the end of the day, you know what you want to do. You know, being an entrepreneur, you know, doing business for yourself is what you want. And you kind of got to follow that instinct. And it sounds like that's exactly what you did. And I'm sure there were some trials and tribulations there where you're just like, what am I doing? Or how am I going to get this done? But at the end of the day, it seems like now you're in a place, you know, where it's where you, what you're meant to be doing and where you want to be and like leading an organization and, and you have a great team around you and you got, you know, well, I mean, you guys got Volne going on too, which is great because you, you get, they're developing stuff and, and that's a great little partnership almost to have um, as a broker. Cause anything you guys build, you inevitably get to sell, which is awesome. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a great backbone and obviously, you know, having, having that inventory and having, you know, that relationship with someone who's extremely active and, and growing very quickly. Um, it, right off the bat, it, it gave, it gave our company credibility. Oh yeah. Um, yep. you know, and I think it's funny, you know, in terms of a, a plan and a foolproof plan, there's no such thing as a, a foolproof plan. No. Uh, you know, you look at what happened, uh, you know, a year ago with the pandemic, I mean, things just happen in life, um, you know, and in the world that nobody can predict. And, yeah. You know, I think when, when I ultimately jumped into real estate, I didn't really know what I was doing. Um, but I knew, like you said, I knew that I needed to do something. And I, you know, at the time I was doing a lot of, a lot of personal development, a lot of, you know, reading, a lot of trying new things. And, and I was at a place where, for where I was at my age, um, I was 24 years old. I was making really good money, um, but I wasn't happy. So I knew I needed to change something and um, all roads ended up leading to, you know, to what I'm doing now. And I'd be lying if I told you it was, it's been, uh, it's been a smooth ride um, and it's changed a lot of directions, but um, I think that's, that's any, that's any journey, you know, in, in any industry that you get in, you're always going to be adapting and pivoting. And if you're not, you're probably not going to get to, to the point where you want to be because things you have to you have to change and, and roll with the punches you gotta you gotta be able to adapt you gotta be a, you gotta be tough you gotta be you know able to be a leader too i mean now that you're leading an organization you know when um when things get difficult people look to you um as the person who you know is going to be the one that makes the decisions or is going to be the one that like hey is 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 ryan panicking or is ryan like how you know how is he doing because and you need to be able to handle those situations better than better than anybody else in this in, in that in those circumstances but 
you know, when the times are going good, you also have to be able to manage those and, um, and, and, you know, not take them for granted, but, um, but, you know, get as much out of them as you possibly can. So I totally agree with you. It's just a constant roller coaster. I don't think that ever really changes. Like you said, there's no real foolproof plan, foolproof plan. Um, as an entrepreneur, you know, you might, it's easy to look around and be like, Hey, that guy seems pretty comfortable. But at the end of the day, everyone has their own problems or issues or things they're trying to deal with or get over with all the time. Um, yeah. Well, especially now too, with, with social media and yes, you know, listen, you're, you, what you're going to see on there 99% of the time, is it's going to be a fraction of reality, right? You're going to yeah. see, you know, there are, you know, and, and people do, there are people out there that do, you know, post some of the trials and tribulations and, and, and motivations and things in lessons, life lessons, things like that. But 99% of the time, what you're going to see is what people want to be the perception. And, you know, I don't think it's, it's people fluffing it. I just think it's, Hey, they want, you know, they want to put out positive things. They want to put out, you know, accolades and accomplishments and a lot of, you're not going to see, you know, the dirty work. Um, and you're not going to see it on social media because it's not pretty. Um, right. Right. Anyone, anyone who's, you know, anyone who started a company or anyone who's, you know, gotten out of their comfort zone or taken risk or, or done, you know, done anything that's, you know, self-gratifying knows that there were some, some struggles that went along with it. And, you know, it, it wasn't easy. Um, and that could be for, that could be for anything, sure. any, you know, personal yeah. or, or professional. Mm-hmm. So now that you're at this point in your career, Ryan, do you have any uh, like general business principles that you like to follow um, as, you know, as a, just as a real estate broker and a real estate agent developer, anything within your career? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, I try to keep it simple and, and, and really just stay, you know, just stay true to myself. Um, you know, and I, I kind of, you know, our, our culture with, with Evo is, is the same of, you know, we want, you know, we're very selective with who we let into our inner circle. Um, you know, we want to make sure that their, you know, their, uh, their visions, their morals and, and, you know, everything that, they believe in aligns with what, what we believe in. Um, but with that said, we also want, you know, freedom and, and we want everyone to, to flourish within, you know, within their own confines. And, you know, for myself, it's, um, you know, the same of, you know, being true to myself and listening to, you know, listening to what I need, um, you know, and sometimes it's, you know, sometimes it's, it's taking a foot off the gas for a couple of days or, you know, taking a step back and, and, and reflecting and, and, you know, um, myself, I'm a very, I'm a very passionate person. So sometimes my opinions or, you know, my thoughts can come off a bit brash, um, you know, and every now and then I have to remind myself, Hey, you gotta, you gotta take a step back. You know, you gotta, you gotta look at the other side of it and, you know, you gotta take some time, but, you know, I think, um, you know, all the, I've been extremely fortunate, um, and not just with Evo, but, just in my career in general um, and in my life, I've been surrounded by a lot of great people, a lot of high quality people. Um, and, you know, I think it's, it's, it's definitely helped me become a, a, a better person today. And, and there's been a lot of people, um, friends, family, um, mentors, work colleagues that, you know, have kind of, kind of showed me the, showed me the ropes and, and kind of showed me the, you know, the way to, to conduct yourself in business. And I'm someone that, I'm someone that believes there is no separation from um, business and real life. You know, when some, you know, when someone says, Oh, you know, don't take it personal. It's just business. Well, for me, my business is personal, right? You know, I, I take what I do very seriously and what, what I do affects impacts others and what, you know, what I do affects me and, and, and my family. So, um, you know, I feel like if you operate, um, kind of like the, you know, it's very, very cheesy, but the golden rule of, you know, like in life, treat people, how you want to be treated. Um, you know, I think the same in business and, and sometimes it's, it's harsh in that, you know, it doesn't mean you, you can't be tough. Um, and you can't do things that are just and, and put your foot down and draw a sand in the line. But, um, you know, you also, you know, you're not going to get very far in this industry, screwing people over. No, uh, no. So. I, I, um, I got a taste of it, you know, myself and I, um, I couldn't agree more. You know, it's one of those 
industries where there's a lot of, um, I mean, everything is done, obviously the, when it comes to like paperwork and stuff like that is what it is, but there's a lot of just, you know, one of those handshake type of deals that go on where it's like, Hey, I introduced you to that person. I, you know, kind of showed you that deal. I did this, did that. And like, especially in, in, it's a small city, like real estate. I mean, everybody knows everybody. So you really do got to be careful. Your reputation, your, your reputation is everything. Um, and you don't want to be the guy who's, you know, Hey, you get introduced to someone by someone else. And then all of a sudden you start feeding them deals or doing deals with them. And you, you just cut out the person that was the, you know, that you, you bite the hand that fed you. And now it's like, well, everybody knows that. And, and people start to know it pretty quickly. And, and not that I ever had that happen to me or ever did that to anybody, but I, I was quickly told by, you know, anybody who was showing me the ropes, like, Hey, this is how this goes. And, and I think it's just tried and true. And I think that, like you said, you got to be true to yourself, especially in, in real estate, you got to be, um, you got to treat others like you're going to be treated. And, and I think a lot of what, you know, why you guys have had, had the success that you've had is because you've probably just stuck to those principles. You've probably taught, you know, a lot of your new agents, the 20 new agents that you brought on, or some of the guys that have been around for a little while, like that from the get-go, you know, Hey, we're not out here. This isn't just about you doing anything and everything to get a commission. This is about doing it the right way. And, and going right by the client, going right by the person that brought you the deal, going right for the company. Um, all that stuff is so important and it can't be overlooked. Yeah. I mean, it takes, it takes a lifetime to build a reputation. It takes one second to ruin a reputation. It, so it, I'm sure it does, especially uh, do the wrong, like, you know, someone like you, I mean, you guys just seem like, like I said, that circle, I, I, I it's like, you, you keep it tight, but you know, it seems like the, the players know everybody and um, and you just don't want to do the wrong thing by some. It's just not it's not the right thing to do in general. It's not ethical. But at the end of the day, like you said, do it once and, and you might not have a second chance. Yeah. And one one thing that I learned, um, you know, and I learned this, I learned this the hard way um, was that there is no such thing as handshake deals, um, you know, and, and I'm someone who says, hey, my word is my bond. Um, but with that said, everything should always be documented. Sure. Um, and that's, that's to protect both, both or all parties who are involved. And I say that because a lot of these transactions um, can take, they can take years to transpire and everyone's running around a million miles an hour doing deals with a bunch of different people. And if you're, you know, if you do a handshake deal with someone and then you get two and a half, three years down the line, it, it, I, I guarantee you're going to get into a, a, he said, she said, Oh, Oh, I thought it was this. And I thought it was that. And it's, it's not always that someone's trying to screw somebody. It's just that there's been, you know, so much time transactions since then and in thousands of conversations that, you know, you, you need a reference point to point back and say, Hey, this, this is what we agreed on. And, um, you know, it just, you know, I'm, again, I'm someone who, you know, I was always taught at, you know, at a young age that, you know, respect is, is above all and your word is your bond. Again, with, with, with real estate, we're talking with hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in these transactions. Yep. Um, a lot of times you're working with people that you have personal relationships, you know, some type of maybe family tie, a friend of a friend, a referral, I know a lot of people in this industry who will say, Oh, well, I know this person, they're a friend. So we don't need a contract. The people that you know, and that you're close with, it's even more important to have a guideline of expectations of X, Y, Z for, and again, it's not, it's not because this person's going to screw you or that person's going to do that, right. but it's just the, the E the quickest way to fray a relationship is when expectations aren't met. Yep. And you know, if you're working with, you know, family, the last thing you want is to, to show up to a family reunion and, and you know, and, and have this tension there because right. someone thought this or someone thought that where if you just take, you know, you just take a little time, you bring in, you know, attorneys and the right people and just, it doesn't, and again, it doesn't need to be this big, robust, you know, complicated contract. It could just be a, a one, you know, one sheet or a couple lines like, Hey, this, 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 you know, just so that everyone knows you can always reference back and say, Oh yeah, it was that, you know? So, um, it's, it's, 
it couldn't be more true. Like you said, you know, especially in an industry like that where things take a lot of time to transpire and like personal situation can change so quickly. You know what I mean? Like where maybe at one point in time, someone's flush with cash and you, you talk about a handshake deal and then it gets to be eight months, a year later when it's actually finalized and, and they, they just bought a couple properties and they just like need, and it's just like everyone's personal life always changes too. Everyone's business life always changes. So yeah, I think it's so, super important. And, um, in in any in any line of business but especially yours where are you um you know where are you kind of seeing because this is something that you know i see you guys as a company that's kind of on the forefront of this um where are you seeing technology kind of play a disruptive role in uh in the real estate world you know it's it's interesting um it's interesting because i'm someone who comes from the old school of you know, in person, shake hands, look eye to eye. I still write things down, pen and paper. I'm, I love technology. I'm not, a, I'm not a tech guy. Um, but with that said, we're seeing a ton of these tools that come out and, you know, a, a ton of resources and information that can now be accessible with the click of a button. And I think we're starting to see, you know, you're, I mean, you're seeing it with, if you look at like the evolution of, of Zillow, you know, um, you know, 10 years ago, Zillow was not, you know, it was, you know, it was just kind of getting going. And now it's, I mean, it's taken over the industry in terms of people look at that and that's how they anticipate what the value of their properties are worth. Sure. Um, but I think, you know, I think you're going to start to see technology come in and, and be a bigger component. I think social media, definitely is, is taking this industry and all industries by storm. I mean, yep. people go on, you know, people are on Instagram to get their news. They're on Instagram to go shopping. They're on Instagram to get their entertainment. They're on Instagram to potentially find real estate now. So, um, you know, I, I think the, the continued evolution of, of social media as a, a free platform is, is going to continue. I think you're going to see more and more brokerages and agents, really increase their presence on these platforms as far as you know these these virtual tours um i think they're extremely cool yep um i don't you know i have a tough time wrapping my head around the general public using utilizing these things in turn and in, in to make decisions with seeing properties sight unseen sure um, you know investors that you work with seasoned seasoned investors and you know, developers and things like that, people that have been in the trade and, and they know what they're looking for, what they're doing. They'll buy stuff sight unseen, not all the time, but it's not that it's not uncommon. Right. right. Um, for, you know, for first time home buyer, I just, I, I have a hard time seeing a lot of people, um, you know, shifting to technology. And I think if you look at what happened, um, you know, during the pandemic early on in, in, in April and May, um, you know, real estate was considered essential. And although there were different guidelines that we had to adhere to in terms of compliance and, and obviously safety measures with showings and open houses and whatnot, people were still out buying property. They were still out looking at property. So um, our industry was impacted in terms of there were some new things implemented, but it, it, it wasn't this major overhaul that we've mm -hmm. seen with other companies where they're completely remote. Oh, yeah. um, you know, they're getting out of brick and mortar. They're probably looking at pivoting and, and you know, getting out of there, you know, getting out of this space or, or, or what it may be. But um, I think it's, I mean, you'd be foolish to say that technology is not going to continue to, to evolve and, and put their imprint on, on the industry. Definitely. I agree. I, I like what you said about, uh, you know, the virtual tours, I mean, they are, they're super cool. You know what I mean? Some of the, especially like the videos, the drone footage or the ones that, you know, they're, it's like, you can click around a whole room and see every corner. But like you said, for someone who's never bought property before, you know, that is, that's a tough decision to make based on a few pictures. I mean, um, you know, you don't want to, cause all of a sudden, you know, you go, you end up showing up and that thing needs a new roof. You had no idea. And you, you weren't able to get eyes on it with a broker. So, or, or an expert, 
And now thing needs a new roof, thing needs a new boil or th this, that, and the other thing. It ends up being 30, 40,000 more than you thought it was going to, because you couldn't check it out. Whereas, you know, like you said, someone who's seasoned, someone who knows what they're doing, they probably anticipate things like that or, or they ask the right questions. Um, that's a big piece of it is just at being able to ask the right questions. There's, there's too many variables that go into a good purchase or a bad per a bad purchase. And there's too much riding on it. You know, I mean, for most people buying a piece of property is, is the biggest purchase and going to be the biggest sale that they make in their entire life. So, um, you know, to do that without, without taking the time to, to get out there and see it. Um, yep. I just find a hard time seeing, you know, believing that that's going, going to be the standard. Yep. Definitely. So what are some things you like to do outside of work, Ryan? Anything that's important to you or anything that like any hobbies of yours? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, I, I love to play sports, love to, you know, love to get out there and, and, uh, play golf, um, yeah, yeah. You know, play, play basketball all throughout college, nice. um, played all sports growing up. So excited to see things get back to normal, uh, in a couple of months here, ready for, for football season. Yeah. Hopefully the pots can bounce back. Um, and I'm waiting to see who they draft. I'm like pumped about this upcoming draft. I don't know. It just feels like, I hope they make a good move. I, hope they make a good I mean, move. you know, um, I'm, I'm excited too, but you know, if I, I've watched enough, enough of these things to know that Bill's <laughs> probably going to do the, uh, the unsexy thing and trade back, or take, you know, take some offensive lineman that we've never heard of, but, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we've been, we've been spoiled here. Um, not, not to mention too, I mean, you know, I don't know where to take on it is, but I mean, I, I love Brady. I still do. I don't still do, you know, there's a lot of people that are like, Oh, how do you, how can you root for him? You betrayed us. I'm like, you know, we kind of kicked them out and, yep. you know, he gave us everything. So for me watching, you know, this past year, watching them win, I felt like, you know, him, th he, him throwing a Gronk all over the field. I'm like, this is what I've been watching my whole life. So it was sick. Um, you kind of got, kind of got two teams now. It's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like if you have uh, two friends that, that break up, you know, <laughs> like, Hey, well, I, you know, I like them both. I don't want to. <laughs> no, no, I don't, I don't understand the Brady hate from new Englanders. I mean, it just doesn't like the guy, like you said, he gave us everything. Like he was everything for like pretty much my entire football life. Tom Brady was the guy. He still is the guy, obviously, but it's like, how can you just, it was like you said, it wasn't, it wasn't him. It wasn't like, it was just, it was, it was put on him and, he made the right move clearly. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think too, you know, it's, it's funny. Cause you know, you look at, I think you look at his story, right. Came in underdog, um, you know, underdog in college drafted, nobody paid attention did, you know, doesn't have the skill set that jumps out at you, but right. You know, just the, you know, the mental, mental toughness, the fortitude, the persistence. It's, I mean, true underdog story, hard work story. I mean, it's, it's the American dream story. And then, you know, you look at what happened with this, you know, with the Pats breakup. And I think you see a lot of these superstars part ways with their franchise. And a lot of times it gets ugly, you know, um, mm -hmm. and, you know, he said, he said all the right things. Um, you know, the Patriots bill said all the right things. So, you mm -hmm. know, it's just an example of, Hey, people are going to evolve. Things are going to change, maybe you move in a different direction, but um, you know, you, you keep your head down, you say the right things, you do the right things. Most of the time, things are going to work out for you. They sure are, man. And he's, he's a perfect example. He, his story is crazy. His, what he's been able to do last year, I just remember it ending and being like, that was, this is the craziest thing I've ever seen. Like, what, what is this guy doing? How is he still dominating? He pulled like f four people off the street. You know what I mean? Like, or like a running back, a wide receiver, a tight end who had nothing to do with playing football, put them all on a team and won the fucking like, it's like pickup ball. And he won the Super Bowl. <laughs> that's why. And that's why I love sports because, you know, any, anything can happen. And, um, you know, that's, it's what makes it fun. You know, you watch yeah. it, you, you know, you watch it. I'm a movie guy. I like movies, but you know, you watch a, you watch a movie and a lot, you know, you know, you kind of know what's going to happen, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that you never do. Last question, Ryan, do you have any um, book recommendations you'd give to the audience? Anything you've read recently or throughout your career that uh, was impactful? Yeah. Um, great, great question. Um, the book that I'm, I'm reading right now and I'm, I'm almost finished is uh, green lights from Matthew. Oh, I love it. Wasn't that awesome? Awesome. Awesome book. 
Um, what a, he's the best storyteller I think I've ever like. I listened to the Audible one too, and I like I read it while I listened, but and then I caught myself just listening in the car and like skipping chapters. But dude, yep. the way he tells stories is unbelievable. Well, I think part of it's you know part of it's his his accent, and you know he's got a very defined character in terms of who he is. So you know for him to be reading it himself, you're kind of like you you can see him. It's like you're sitting down there with them. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, yeah, it's funny. Cause I'm, I'm on the audible now too. And, um, you know, I was, I, I'm not going to lie. I was a hater of the audible. I'm like, oh, you know, you don't, you don't get the same type of retention and, and, and from reading than you do when you're listening to it. And I found out, you know, I kind of found out that I just, I, I don't read nearly as much as I would like if I, if I read. So. Right. Right. Um, Makes me tired, especially after a long day of work. You're like, all right, I just did five pages and like, but Audible, you throw on when you're in the car, it's the best. Yeah, you throw on when you're in the car. You know, I listen along when I'm, you know, taking the dogs for a walk. So yep. it's, it's pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's that's the most recent book I'm reading. Definitely would recommend that. Love that um, one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a great know, one. Yeah. Per, personal favorites. I, I mean, I'll give you one or two more. I, um, Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you're, if you're a, a salesperson or even, you know, just in negotiations in general. Um, I think there's a lot of principles that can be taken from that. And that's just a, a, a cool book. I mean, talk about, you know, talk about a, a kick-ass dude, um, yeah. form, former FBI uh, hostage negotiator. Um, some of those stories that, you know, he tells in the book, you're just like, damn. And I thought, I thought I had a lot riding on, on this deal that I had to get done. Right. You talk about pressure. Yeah, yeah, like terrorists and like yeah. oh, okay, well, <laughs> but yeah, that's um, that's a great. Know. I uh, I haven't finished that book yet, but I, I have master class. I watched his master class. He's yeah, he's a he's a cool guy, man. He's a cool guy. Yeah, um, real good. Yeah, actually, um, I'm a, I actually was doing a, a book club, um, last year during during COVID. We we're doing um, we had a pretty good group about, you know, I'd say twelve to fifteen people. Um, once a week we're just getting together and, and kind of going over a few chapters in a book. So yeah, something that, something that I want to get picked back up this year. So hopefully you, you, uh, reinvigorated that spark. For me. <laughs> uh, I hope I did. I I've asked pretty much every guest that question. So I have a list of like a hundred plus recommendations. I gotta, I'm going to put it on a piece of paper when I send it out to all the guests so that everybody has like a million books they could read, but what, what, let me ask you this. I'm wrapping up. Green lights. What would you recommend for 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 the next book for me to pick up? Hmm. That's a good question. I recently bought um in in read. I mean, it's huge. It's a massive book. But Tools of Titans by um by um oh I'm totally blanking. It's called Tools of Titans. Tim Ferriss, and um it's like this big. But it's uh he he basically just went around and interviewed all of these highly successful like industry experts whether they're you know they're workout experts whether they're you know anyone from tony robbins to like triple h from from wwe to um you know all these different athletes just crazy like drug enthusiasts like he interviewed people who like test out mushrooms just like this crazy stuff but um it's really billionaires but it's really cool because he asked them similar questions um he asked them you know about their stories. It tells you a little bit about what they do. And like some of these people are just totally psychotic, like in terms of like their regimens and stuff like that. But it's really, it's really neat. Um, it gives like kind of a, a behind the scenes look at like, you know, some of these guys who have just like either dominated, you know, business or dominated fitness or whatever they are. And I, I really enjoyed it. You know, there's the, I think, and he even tells you at the beginning, he's like, there's some chapters here. You're just going to skip over, but you can kind of pick and choose and he outlines like every one of them, like really well. So you can kind of go to one chapter and each story is like four or five pages. I love it. It's awesome. So, yeah. That's yeah I'll, I'll, I'll check that out. I'll check that out. I'm sure, I'm sure there's some uh, similarities that, you know, you see across all these people. Well, a lot of them talk about like meditation. They talk about, um, you know, that's a big one that I have always been talking to myself about practicing, but you hear it a lot. Like these highly successful people do stuff like that. Um, morning routines. And then, like you said, you know, some of the stuff that even we talked about staying true to yourself and, and just like, you know, um, and, 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 and carrying your word and, and being disciplined and, and, um, but and then there's a, but it just goes to show you 
which is a big reason why I like doing this show too, is like talk to so many different people and there's so many different ways to be an entrepreneur. There's so many different ways to start a business. There's so many different ways to get successful, however you define it. Um, so there's so many differences, but there's also a lot of similarities in every person I talk to that just like, they kind of hammer it. You know, these things are, are what I did and this is how I got it. And a lot of it comes back to passion. A lot of it comes back to doing what they love and then just sticking with the plan. Look, man, where can people find you if they want to reach out and uh, learn more about real estate or just say what's up? Yeah. So uh, check out, check out my Instagram. It's off market, Oconee. Um, that's probably the best place to, to, to follow what I'm doing. Shoot me a note. Um, from there, you got, you know, all my information, my email, my phone. Um, but that's, you know, that's kind of my, that's kind of turned into my new, uh, my email, my DM, my text message. I mean, it's all, it's all integrated. So I'd say that's probably the best place to, to reach me, kind of check out what we're doing. Yep. Um, yep. give a follow to Evo Boston as well. Yep. Uh, if you're ever looking to buy, sell. Um, anywhere here in, in, in Massachusetts, but specifically in the greater Boston area. Um, we're extremely active with, with new construction, investment properties, and, um, you know, we, we, love, we love real estate. So we'd be happy to talk to anybody about it. Awesome, man. Sounds great. Well, thanks for coming on. Thanks for sharing your time. It's been great and, uh, and good meeting you. Let's uh, definitely keep the conversation going. Yeah, appreciate it, Joe. We'll see you at the, uh, at, the, at the next networking event. Yeah, no, I'll be there. I'll definitely be there. Sounds good, buddy. Thank you. All right, bro.